Welcome back everybody to our Intermediate and Advanced Civil 3D tutorial series. In this video we're going to take a look at some multi-radius curves uh, specifically related to intersection design. These are not highway related curves. You won't see these on any corners on highways. You'll see them more in uh, inside a municipality for making right hand turns. Now I have a, a mostly completed intersection here and as we see up top I've already got my multi-radius curves. We're going to go ahead and turn these magenta colored lines into our multi-radius curves down below. Now I am going to try recording this video in 4K and we'll see how that goes. Uh, please let me know in the comments down below if, it's, if it doesn't look good or if there's something wrong with it. The next couple I'm going to try in 4K. And also I am in Civil 3D 2022 here. The commands will work in 2021, 20, 19, 18, 17, as far back as, as we can go. I believe these, these commands are within Civil 3D. Now, as far as I'm aware, they are not in plain old AutoCAD. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't make these curves. It's just a lot more convoluted process in order to do it. And you have to do a lot more math. Now I have an intersection here and again uh, related to my municipality here in the city of Calgary. I have a parkway road and an arterial street and we have specific details in the city guidelines for parkways to arterial streets and these govern the multi-radius curves. So I'm taking a look at my detail here and if I zoom in uh, it's a little bit blurry, but that's the city document. We see on the right hand side here, we have a multi-radius curve. This is a three center curve. We have three radiuses, beginning a curve, uh, the end of the first curve, the end of the second curve, the end of the third curve. And it goes along with the numbers four, five, oops, four. And these numbers correspond directly to the table down here to the right. So four, five, four, it's a three radius curve. The, the start and the end of the curve are the same radius. They're the same length, they're the same delta, regardless of the corner. Then we have the middle one, five. That is where the, the smallest radius takes place. It's where the main turn happens. This one eases you in to the corner, eases you back out into back into traffic. If we look on the left here, we have what's called a four radius curve. Now. Within my municipality, they use four radius curves on a faster road to a slower road so the car can get out of traffic and do their slowing down in this separate lane. It's called a, a, what we call here a flyaway lane. So we have radius one, two, three, two. And again, this corresponds directly with the table one, two, three, back to two. Now, the hardest part of this is typing in the numbers and getting the numbers put in correctly. It's uh, watching what you're typing. It's, it's very easy to make a mistake when you're typing in a whole bunch of numbers here. So uh, we are gonna be very careful when we're typing these numbers in. And I am going to minimize my Civil 3D here so I can put the table up to the right hand side. And I can see the numbers as I'm typing them in. Now, let's start with the easier of the two, the three center curve. Now, before you do this, these have to be lines. They cannot be polylines. They cannot be any other fancy uh, types of lines, feature lines, all the above. They have to be lines, plain old simple line commands. And I have them simply filleting to a radius corner of zero. So under the uh, lines and curves drop down. And again, I have my menu bar brought up. So if you click this drop down, there's a show menu bar right here. It'll bring this menu bar up. Alternatively, they are in the ribbon under somewhere. But under lines and curves, we wanna create curves and we wanna create multiple curves. Now, Civil 3D goes and figures all this out for you. We, we purely type in the numbers and Civil 3D makes the curves for us. Now, travel direction absolutely matters here. Um, like, like intersection design, like highway design, we need to worry about travel direction and which way we're drawing. So I am driving from this road, so we drive on the right-hand side of the road here, to this road. 
Now on a three center curve, this doesn't matter so much because the radiuses on either end are the same. It, it makes a big difference on the four center curve. So enter my number of curves. I have three curves. Then Civil 3D asked me for a floating curve number. Now back to this table, these numbers that are in this table are for a perfect 90 degree intersection where this road is 90 degrees from this road. Now in real life, would you have a perfect 90 degree intersection? Absolutely, yes, there, there might be. However, most of the intersections we design these days are not 90 degrees. They're slightly off, it might be 93, 95 degrees, might be 60 degrees. Again, that all depends on your municipality. So Civil 3D wants to know the floating curve number because these numbers will not work on an intersection that's not 90 degrees. And I have one here that's not 90 degrees for this exact reason. Now the 454, the floating curve will be our middle curve. So when we go to type the numbers in 454, it's curve number two. It's the one with the smallest radius. And what's going to happen is the length and the delta of this curve are going to either shrink or expand based on the angle of the intersection. So my floating curve number is curve number two. And now we start typing in radiuses. So curve one radius, we need to know the radius. And we need to know the length category. And I don't think I can highlight both of those so we can keep them on, but it's 36 and 9.024. So curve one radius is 36, curve one length is 9.024. And again, be very careful when you're typing this information in. Curve two radius is 12. And as soon as I hit enter, you'll notice it does not ask me for a length because this is the floating one. This one's going to adjust based on the angles of the intersections. Back to curve three radiuses, so four, five, back to four. This is again where it gets a little bit confusing. My 36 radius, 9.024. And as soon as I hit enter, we see that Civil 3D has placed in that curve. And I'm gonna hit enter again to exit the command. And it's placed it on just the, the def points layer I currently have active. And here's my three radius curve. I have three separate arcs. Now, again, it's always good to click on the items and check your work. So my very first radius here, I look at my properties. We have a radius of 36. We have a arc length of 9.024. And if we wanted to look at the angle as well, I don't have all my digits displayed, but the angle would match the 1421, 41.44. If I had it turned on, that should match as well. Looking at my second curve, radius of 12. However, my length is 9.871 where this length is 12.834. So because this is less than 90 degree turn, we're about 75 degree turn here, it has had to change the length of that arc in order to compensate. Or sorry, arc length is 9.071 or 9.871, where normally it would be 12.843. And then finally checking that third curve, we have a radius of 36 and a arc length of 9.024, which we can confirm in our table again. So again, always double check your work. Never, never trust Civil 3D, never trust your fingers to type things in properly. I am gonna go now to the curve on the other side here, the four center curve. So again, I have my edge of pavement, my edge of pavement lines, they're just at a, a fillet radius of zero and they are still uh, line work. So we're gonna make lines and curves, create curves, multiple curves. I am driving, now the direction absolutely 100% matters here. I'm driving from here to here. I'm driving down the right-hand side of the road, making my right-hand turn, coming south. Enter number of curves. In this case, now we have a four center curve. Civil 3D again asks for the floating curve number and uh, easiest way to explain it, the one with the smallest radius, the one directly across from the traffic island, the one that is one, two, three, two. So two and two are going to be the same. Three will be that odd, odd one out. So floating curve number is three. Curve one radius is 440 meters. 66.683 for a curve one length. Curve two radius is 50 with a 14.691 length. And again, I'm just reading them off the table over here. Curve three radius is 15. I, I typed in curve three was the floating curve, so it does not ask me. 
for the length. Now we're back to curve four radius. Now do not read off column four on the table. We're back to one, two, three, back to two. Curve four radius is 50 with a curve four length of 14.691. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to place it in. So our very first radius is the large one. It's a radius of 440 with 66.683. And again, confirm your work. Curve two radius is 50 with 14.691, 50 and 14.691. Curve three radius is 15. Uh, take a look at the arc length, 19.795, where if it was a perfect 90 degrees, it would be 12.474. But this is the floating one. It either gets larger or smaller depending on the angle. And our curve four radius is back to 50 with 14.691, 50 with 14.691. So you'll have a document like this from the city, from your municipality with the curve data. They'll give you the information in order to model these curves. And again, Civil 3D, really, really easy when it comes to this. You just type in the numbers and Civil 3D does the work and does all the calculations in the background. From what I'm aware, AutoCAD does not have this functionality or they don't have it yet, but it may come in the, in the future. Now, along with these three and four center curves, we're going to move into a, a handy little piece of software called vehicle tracking, and that will be in the next couple videos. We'll do some work specifically related to vehicle tracking and making sure large trucks can drive through this interchange and we'll have to adjust stuff. Now, I do have all my islands finished. I have my medians all drawn in, and this would be an example of this interchange and potentially how they would build it, although I'll be maybe not at such a crazy angle like this. But that will be in the next couple of videos is on vehicle tracking.